Hi, I'm Jessica Tan from Newcastle University in the UK. Sjogren's syndrome affects approximately 1 in 20,000 adults, but there are no effective treatments to date. One of the major barriers to finding new treatments for Sjogren's syndrome is that the clinical presentation is highly variable among individual patients. Some patients experience very few symptoms, whereas others report various symptoms at different levels of severity. Why the clinical manifestations of Sjogren's syndrome are so heterogeneous is not clear, but it is plausible that it reflects differences in the underlying pathobiological mechanisms between individual patients. In order to address this research question, we use the following approach. First, using data from 608 patients from the UK Primary Sjogren's Syndrome Registry, we identify clinical clusters based on the severity of five key symptoms of Sjogren's Syndrome – pain, fatigue, dryness, anxiety and depression. We examine the differences between these different clusters or subtypes in terms of their clinical and biological parameters. For this we use routine clinical data, serum protein measurements and whole blood transcriptomics. Secondly, we tested whether these same subtypes exist in two other European cohorts and whether we could see similar clinical and biological differences between the subtypes. And finally, we asked whether specific subtypes might respond better or worse to different treatments by examining the data from two published phase three clinical trials. As shown in the dendrogram and heat map, we identified at least four distinct subgroups of patients. Low symptom burden, or LSB, which is shown in yellow, having low scores on all five symptoms. High symptom burden, or HSB, which is shown in red, scoring highly on all five symptoms. Dryness dominant fatigue, or DDF in blue, had high dryness and fatigue scores and low anxiety and depression scores. And pain dominant with fatigue, PDF in green, had high pain and fatigue scores and low anxiety and depression scores. We also found that objective clinical and laboratory parameters differ between the four subgroups. For example, lymphocyte counts are highest in the HSB group, whereas IgG levels are highest in the LSB group. Beta-2 microglobulin and CXCL13 are also significantly different between the four subgroups. More importantly, we also observed similar objective differences between the four subgroups in two independent European cohorts. We then examined the patterns of gene expression in whole blood among the four subgroups. We found that gene expression profiles among the four subgroups are very different to each other. We observed similar differences in an independent cohort. And some of the biggest differences are related to transcripts associated with interferons and B cells. Using discriminant analysis, we can describe the gene expression pattern of individual patients by transforming the data into a location or an address in a three-dimensional transcriptomic space. In the 3D movie, each dot is the transcriptomic address of an individual, with their subgroup membership indicated by the colour of the dot. The movie clearly shows that Sjogren's syndrome patients from each subgroup occupy different locations in the 3D space. The data for the two independent cohorts are plotted on the same 3D space, the French cohort on the upper panel and the UK cohort on the lower panel. The subgroups are placed in similar locations within the 3D space between the two cohorts. In order to find out whether these subgroups respond differently to treatments, we analysed the data from two published phase 3 clinical trials. We stratified the trial subjects into the four subgroups and assessed their responses to hydroxychloroquine and rituximab compared to placebo. For hydroxychloroquine, the top panel, we found that only the high symptom burden subgroup showed improvements in the ESPRI score, a patient symptom score, when compared to the placebo treated patients. Whereas for rituximab, the lower panel, only the dryness dominant with fatigue subgroup showed improvement in stimulated salivary flow compared to the patients receiving placebo. In conclusion, our data shows that Sjogren's syndrome can be classified into at least four subtypes based on the levels of severity of five key symptoms – pain, fatigue, dryness, anxiety and depression. These subgroups have different underpinning pathobiology and their responses to different treatments may also differ, however further validation is necessary. Our data have several important clinical implications with regard to clinical management, drug development and clinical trial design for example inclusion and exclusion criteria, and study outcome selection. Future studies are needed to assess the long-term outcomes of these subgroups, including the disease stability over time. 
We also need to dissect in more detail the underpinning pathobiology of each subgroup.